Hello, I'm going to be showing you how to import your models into Dota 2. Uh, for this video, I made this very quickly uh, ward, uh, just a little eyeball and uh, some rings around. And it has a very simple animation. The eye watches and the rings rotate. And because the UV mapping is made by box, it looks very weird. So. Um, so what we're going to do is first you want to check and make sure your material. So it is my material. Uh, it has the underscore color. Make sure of that. Uh, that's for the importer later on when you uh, yeah, when it looks for the files. So we're going to go to World War Model Tools. And what I'm going to do is just going to go to pick model, select the model, and you're going to see this name pop up. I'm going to remove this because uh, I find it that sometimes it messes up the animation orientation of the bones and etc. So it just, what I see here is what I'm going to get if I untick the local origins. As far as I recall, um, you can just uh, try different combinations if it doesn't work. Uh, next, I'm going to go to Sequences, and I'm going to name this uh, Idle 2. I think I'm getting some kind of error, so I, I think that's what I'm going to call it. And I'm going to press that Sequence. Uh, you can see that you can set uh, the start and ending of the frames for various animations. So you can keep all of your animations into one file, which is very handy and what I recommend using. So next we're gonna select the model path. So this is under uh, models and then a folder name. So if you don't give it an, uh, anything, it's just gonna be under the folders just for everyone. So I'm gonna name this ring I. And I'm gonna name this for the materials again, models. So it's gonna be materials, models, ring. I. Uh, and then just simply press export and there we go and it compiles so once that's done whoop, once it's done uh, I could actually go in and check the model in the model viewer for global offensive because those are that's the game that I have set up here uh, if you have I don't know a uh, Counter-Strike Source, or Portal, or Team Fortress, whatever. Um, it's going to be under that game. So I'm using Global Offensive because it's the newest game, and, and it's what I think works best. So load model, and I'm going to go right next to... Ba ring guy, here it is. And we have the model, and it doesn't have a texture, it seems, but you can see it there. Um, idle too, and you can see it's animation here, there, and it works great. Uh, to get the animation, I mean the material working, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, and press export the VTFs, and uh, on the material you want to go all the way up, and uh, make sure this is the proper name here, so. Usually it's going to say like O2 default, O3 default. So just put the name here, like ring eye or I don't know, metal or whatever. Uh, then go to export VTF and simply put in here export. And materials exported. Next, I can just go ahead and refresh. And here is my model with the material. Wonderful. Now to get it into Dojo 2, we are going to, I'm going to be closing this. You can have it open to be sure that what you're getting is what you want. I'm going to close this too. So next, we're going to go to model source. This is going to take us to the folder, to this folder here. And you can see we have the QC file, the SMD and the idols SMD. I actually don't need this one. so. The actual animation I have is idle 2. 
I'm not sure why it saved an idle animation, which is no animation at all. You can double check again in the model viewer, just be sure of the names. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to open up Dota 2, but the path. So mine is under txtd, steam library, steam apps, common, and then it's Dota 2 beta. And then I have content and then I have a pre-import folder that I created. So I created that just to keep my stuff uh, clean. And I'm going to create a new folder here called ring hi. And what I'm going to bring here is it's going to be the this SMD, which is just like the geometry and the bones and then the idle animations. And I'm gonna make a copy of this. And what I also want to bring is that I want to bring the the diffuse color here. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna and I'm gonna say this is the um, the sentry color. And if I'm not missing anything, that's you can have a bunch of other files here, but. You can see, uh, you can see how it works. Uh, I have, when I did my own, uh, my own proper word, I had the SMD, the dead sequence, the idle, the idle rare, and the spawning sequence. And then for the, um, I have the color, and then the max one, the max two, and the normal, which there is a PDF from Valve, which explains all of this uh, masking and stuff which uh, I'm going to be sure that they're in the description or on, on an annotation, if I remember. And then you have the same, but for this century, which basically, er, all, the only thing that changes is just basically the, the color of the eye, like here and, and there. And you can see that the max two, they are essentially the same for both here. But you need it twice because that's how the engine makes use of it. So I'm just going to minimize Photoshop next. So we have our models, our animations, and the ring eye. Next, we're going to go to Dota 2. And I'm going to have to use fraps here. All right, so here I am in Dota. And to upload your uh, item, you're going to go to Store Workshop. And you're gonna press publish a new submission. And then we're gonna select war, you're gonna select uh, whichever you're going to uh, do. And then this output file name, um, this is mostly uh, internal. So be sure to, when you actually publish it, uh, that it's a proper name done, I mean. Sure, when I just do quick tests and iterations, I just put whatever random string of letters, but when you're publishing, make sure you use something proper. So now it's going to ask you a bunch of stuff. So in game geometry, you're going to go to the folder we created. So it's pre important then it's going to be uh, ring eye in my case. And uh, it's that's word for me. So that's the geometry. We don't have a portrait geometry specific model. Uh, just make sure that your triangle count is uh, the proper under under the limit. And then the observer texture file. So again, it's going to go to the same folder I was before. So that's why I put everything there. Just easier for me. So I'm going to select the uh, color and center color. And it's going to tell you here, like you need, you need the uh, underscore color and the normal mask one and and those are optional. If they're there, it's going to use them. If it's not there, it's not going to bother you. So next, animations. So spawn. I don't have a spawn animation, So, but because it's required, I'm just going to put the idle for everyone. And I'm going to close. And then, uh, you know, rare stuff. Again, it's not, not necessary. This is important, the hit location bone. Uh, my bones, I have mid-ring, 
So I have a mid ring. Mid ring. That's the the center of the ring, and it's gonna be the location where the 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 missile is gonna hit when someone attacks your ward. And we're gonna close now. And marketing, we don't really need to do that now. And I'm just gonna press import, and it should import properly. Okay. And you can see we have the the file here, which is very hard to see because I just a really bad material for it. Uh, and you can see the reference; it's a little bit small. Uh, but now you you can expand it or reduce it. We can actually go uh, in game. Yes, yeah, so it's gonna create a local server. Let's go with Antimage. Um, so the Sentry and the the normal Observer Ward have the same uh, materials. I go. So it's gonna look the same for now. Um, yeah. I forgot about something. You need to have the default items. Um, I'm just gonna go to my loadout, global items, and uh, ward, and equip. Sorry about this. Uh, I'm gonna go to play, play disconnect, and then we're gonna go back to store and workshop, and it's gonna be still here. Okay, so here we are again. Shall not yes. So hopefully we will have the custom. There we go. Yeah. So you need to have the default item. So you can tell it's a little bit small, and they're all the same. But it works. And now you can just uh, edit this stuff, and you know it looks like an effigy. It's not. So here I am again in this. Um, let me move this to the side. Uh, in the in here in 3ds Max. So the plan here is to rescale this, or maybe you want to change the orientation of the ward to face you. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a new bone. So ah uh, damn it. Somerset started. I'm gonna take a look at it in a moment because, yeah, everything is gonna crash anyways. So, a new bone, and I'm gonna create this on the center. I'm gonna delete that one. Yep, yep, there we go. Make sure these are set at zero. And I'm gonna place this at zero also. So, this is gonna be my. Great. <laughs> um, so now we're gonna select everything, absolutely everything except Groot, and I'm gonna make it apparent here. Uh, so the next thing is I'm gonna change it to look at the front. I, I don't recall which way is the front anyways, but you know, you're gonna have to do a lot of uh, Reloading and everything, so I'm just gonna rotate this uh, all the way there. So let's make it 180. No, let's make it 90. Just, just. And that's not 90 for some reason. Oh. It's because I was in the middle of uh, the. There we go, now it's 90. I was like in the middle of an animation, so so I was wondering why it wasn't properly aligned, but you know, be sure you be you are on the uh, zero frame and uh, you know how to keep selected. Uh, so now we want to scale this, and I'm just gonna scale everything. Actually, I think it was around, I need to be around this little line, so I'm just gonna scale everything. And be sure to kind of heat it up. Or maybe just like that. 
No, nah, that looks horrible. I'm just gonna scale it everything. That's probably run fine. Uh, we're gonna go to World World Model Tools. And we're gonna do the same. We're just gonna pick model. But here's the thing, we're gonna have to add the, the base root now because that's included. So I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna select it and add selection. And now the uh, root, now root is also a part of the model here. So now I can just uh, re export it again. And it's gonna finish. And then I'm just gonna go to the model source, which is here. And I'm just gonna re drag this one scene. Replace. So now we're gonna go to the game. Okay, so we're in the game and there's a really important aspect of the workshop that you need to keep in mind. Is that you need to close the the game when you're going to re-import the model. Uh, because I had problems where the where I will modify the, the files on the on here. So I will update this, but then when I imported here in the game it still was the same as before and it was driving me mad until I realized that I needed to close the game for everything to refresh and or something. I don't know why it happens, it just happens, so you just have to live with it. So be sure to close the game when you want to uh, re-import something. So I'm just ringing again the same, doing the same as before, so this is me ring. And uh, you know, if, if, you, if you make a typo here, like if I call it, uh, bananas and I try to import it it's gonna tell me an error so you know so that's pretty nice to know so mid ring I think it is cap sensitive so import so be sure to keep that in mind so import it's done uh, a little bit of a problem with this uh, animation but nothing that can be fixed. But you can see now the, the scaling is way better. I'm gonna choose Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit. And I'm gonna enter some cheats here. Level 25. Oh. Level up 25. So here we go. Nope. Nope, no, no. Don't walk. And I'm gonna buy the wards. The reason I'm chasing Storm Spirit is just so that I can do this. And I'm here, so I can test the... So you can test here how the... How someone attacks the wards. Sure, kill. So you can see I didn't get the animation I mean the orientation properly but you know I can just rotate the grid so I can just rotate grid and get it right you see that it dies it goes down uh, by itself so you don't have to worry about that there we go and if you want to test your wards here you can just kill them with the uh, kill wards and they die so that's it i hope it was helpful and uh that you enjoyed this and uh well i'll try to be in the forums for a while and uh and try to answer some questions so thank you and uh see ya